And joining me on this Negro League Museum uh, art fundraiser is artist Ben Carraher. Ben, how are we doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Excellent stuff. And what makes Ben's art so appealing to me and so unique is that he uses cut-up uh, sports cards uh, to make his mosaics um, out of his uh, to, to do his craft. Uh, ben, it's a really interesting way of, of doing your art. Um, how did you get into that sort of art? What's your background? Well, um, yeah, I guess we can start by talking a little bit about my history with collecting baseball cards and uh, with the sport. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was a kid, I guess probably from the age of about, I don't know, seven to 10 or so. So uh, late 90s, or sorry, early 90s, um, I uh, played a lot of baseball. Uh, I, I got into collecting baseball cards and I, I was following the Atlanta Braves who at the time kind of went from worst to first during that time. And I was living in Augusta, Georgia then. And so, you know, the Braves, uh, well, they were also America's team. They were uh, the, the team that was um, TBS always broadcasted all their games. So if you had cable, you could watch the Braves. But uh, I got really into collecting cards, um, did it for a few years. And then, you know, as I got into being a teenager, I kind of fell out of it. And for a couple of decades, didn't even think about baseball cards until uh, about two summers ago, um, my, my parents contacted me and, you know, we talk regularly, but my, my dad brought up the baseball cards and he threatened to throw them away. And, um, of course I couldn't let that happen. And so I just happened to be traveling through the area that summer. And I said, hold on to them for a couple months. I'm going to come through, I'll pick them up. And so I got my whole collection and I, you know, this, these cards I hadn't seen in two decades. And I, uh, I kind of did some research, got back into, you know, figuring out what I had, thinking maybe some of them could be worth something. Then I've obviously learned about, you know, that era and, and how they were mass produced and that they weren't really worth much. But it was such a feeling of nostalgia to me that um, I realized that I could build the collection I always wanted as a kid for quite cheap at that point, you know, since I had a full time job, I was making good money. So I just kind of went on this frenzy of buying unopened boxes and packs and and just, I, you know, feeling that thrill of ripping through packs again. Yeah. And um, it did get a little bit out of hand to, to where I was buying a lot of, of junk wax. And um, I decided, you know, to try to mitigate the spending somehow. So I had the idea that I would seek out the cheapest, largest lots of unopened packs on eBay I could, and then, you know, open half of them and try to sell half of them. Um, so I tried doing that and I put up, you know, Craigslist ads for, for unopened packs of cards. And the only guy that actually reached out to me was a dude that was cutting them up to make art. And, um, you know, he, he's not a professional artist, but uh, it was something he was doing as a hobby. And uh, he had been inspired by the work of a Tim Carroll, who Tim Carroll has been doing this for a very long time and is a professional artist. And I think he essentially pioneered this type of, this type of uh, medium for art. Um, but anyway, my friend, the only guy that hit me up who, who we're now fr I'm now friends with, uh, you know, he showed me, he, I sold him some, some junky cards and he showed me his work and he showed me Tim Carroll's work. And I just thought it was so cool that, um, that I wanted to try it. So this was a little over two years ago. Um, I just kind of gave it a try. I had no idea how good I would be at it. I don't really have a huge background in art or anything. Um, but it, I know it, the first thing I did ended up coming out fairly good. And um, I don't know, I just felt really compelled to keep going with it and to keep trying. And then, you know, over the course of the next several months, I kind of developed my technique a little further. And uh, over the last two years, I've been working towards doing it. And now I'm, I'm doing it full time right now. I, I uh, finally quit my, my job uh, back in May. So yeah. right now, art is, is my my sole source of income that's amazing like from looking at your work that i've seen on instagram i wouldn't have believed you've only been doing it for two years that's incredible. yeah thank you um, I, do you roughly know how much you spent on baseball cards well you know i got back into collecting um you know vintage cards and stuff now so um over the last two years since i got back into collecting i mean i've definitely spent a couple thousand i think yeah yeah I, and i've I mean, literally I, just started up my collection and funnily enough i've been going through them all they're on the table here in front of me so i've got some uh studio 91 cards 
Oh um, yeah, I've got plenty of those. Some absolute buttes in them. So I own about 200,000 junk wax cards. Oh yeah, there we go. Some 90, is that 91? Uh, Don- 91 Donruss, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, there, there's so many, I got them from Dugout Classics. I usually get some included when I buy my jerseys. Um, got some Flair Ultra 91s. Yeah, there's some great ones. Is there any particular cars that you used to like collecting um, over others? Well, you know, when I was a kid, it was all about, um, you know, the stadium club and tops and upper deck. Um, I mean, I guess there were so many brands putting out cars at that time. I mean, you had Fleer, you had, you know, Pacific, you had these some, some weird obscure ones. Um, but yeah, I always really liked um, the upper deck ones from, you know, 89, 90 and 91. Yeah, and uh, 1991 tops. I always liked. I always liked those studio ones, the black and white portrait ones, and um, yeah. sta- stadium clubs. You know, they're the, the first ones with the higher quality looking photos. Yeah, I've got some of them uh, here too. They're a great set. I do like those. Yeah, I guess I really liked them all when I was a kid. But now I'm more of a. I, I look more for uh, like 50s and 60s. Yep, those are the ones. Yeah, with the rookie cards on the back. Yep. Yeah, so as far as my collection now, I go I go after vintage cars, 50s and 60s, mostly some 70s, and you know the occasional 80s, early 80s rookie cars like Mattingly, Ripken, and those guys. Um, yeah. But I have boxes and boxes in this room uh, just full of junk era stuff, you know, from the uh, 80s, 90s. I mean, I probably have 200,000 cards that are all sort of dedicated to the art. Um, and that are just just for cutting yeah Uh, do you prefer to use one different pack over another way it comes down to your your creations like um those studio cars you've got there they're quite nice quality but then you've got some like the the domus ones which feel quite cardboardy do do you do you mix and match Um, or is it just a case yeah i mean i do mix and match like it's really mostly about trying to find this set that has the right colors you know um but I prefer the thinner stock, like the Don Russ, because they're they're easier to cut and they're not. The thicker cards can be a little bit um, difficult to deal with because um, you know when you're doing what I do or the way I do it, I like to overlap some of the pieces and stuff. Um, so if you you know if you, the cards are a little thicker, it it can be problematic sometimes. Um, so the, the thinner the better, really. Um, but you know there's been cases where I've had to use thicker cards just because the 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 sets that had the color that I wanted, you know, were a little thicker. Um, but pretty much anything from the '80s and '90s isn't gonna early '90s at least isn't gonna be that thick. Um, some of the more modern stuff I've noticed uh, starting to come in some th- significantly thicker stock. Um, but most of the stuff from that earlier, from that what they call the junk era, uh, is pretty manageable for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Have you ever accidentally caught something of value or a card that you really didn't mean to, to do my mistake? Yeah, I, there's been a couple, I mean, not too many. So I try to stay away from cutting up serialized cards. And um, I, a while back I built just a, a pretty basic uh, Colorado Rockies logo out of Rockies cards. And so I just, you know, order, I just ordered a big box of Rockies cards on, on eBay and uh, I accidentally cut up a one that was serial numbered. I mean, I think it was like one of the ones that was like out of 2019, but it's kind of a policy not to do that. And then the other day I was opening uh, some stadium club. Nice. And just looking for large areas of black. And I accidentally cut up a member's choice, uh, Frank Thomas, which I would normally have kept. Um, So usually what I do is if I see what I like, it goes into a, safe from the scissors pile and then that i've got boxes of you know cards that i couldn't bring myself to cut up yeah nothing worth too much you know it's going to be it's going to be your Kenny griffey juniors and stuff like <laughs> yeah, that yeah that's amazing yeah, we, i've seen the the colorado rockies logo and that's one thing i wanted to ask as well when you're doing a piece do you tend to use um so like for, for the Rockies, you use Rockies specific cards. If you're doing a play like you've got the Nolan Ryan piece there on the wall behind you for the Angels, would you yeah. use just Angels cards in whatever format you can get um, it in? Actually, so that one, 
uh, generally not necessarily i like to um include you know if i can some little easter eggs like if it's an angels player maybe i'll put more you know angels guys in the names or whatever but but typically there's no real um not a whole lot of that going on but you know, on certain pieces, yes, like you said, the Rockies one. And this Nolan Ryan behind me is actually made out of all Nolan Ryan parts. So That's amazing. Yeah, I went and um, I spent probably about $400 in materials to build that one. Yeah. And I've actually got one on the wall right in front of me here. It's the same kind of deal. Let me grab this and I'll show you. This is the, this is the Cal Ripken that I did. Uh, this one is made from all Cal Ripken cars. I don't know if you can see that all right. Yeah, it's amazing. Honestly, I can't. I can't get my head around how good it is. Like, for, for looking, if, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you can see them in the background, they just look like like regular paintings. Um, it's, it's going to slightly off topic, but the, one of the reasons why I really wanted to speak to you about it because I was so intrigued by it. When I was younger, I had a massive poster of Yoda from Star Wars, mm -hmm. and it was made up of all different film cells. So from a distance, it just looked like Yoda. Yeah. But as soon as you got closer to it, it was all different cells from the movie. Um, and it, it just, very cool, yeah. I saw it was awesome. As soon as I found that your stuff, I was like, and your name was on this, I was like, I have to speak to Ben. About this <laughs> because it's just, it's fascinating. Um, so would you like to, to tell the, the viewers and the listeners how it is that you actually work, like how, how you set up from start to finish to complete your piece? Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I mentioned it, but um, I have actually more of a, background in science than art. Um, I have a degree in physics and I uh, worked as an engineer for several years uh, in a, for an optics company that does, that does precision optics. Hmm. And, you know, I kind of got into some computer programming during that time. Uh, they had me tasked to do some curve fitting algorithms, like fitting data to a theoretical curve and uh, just doing some stuff in Python. And I got pretty interested in that, actually. And um, so when I started doing the art, you know, the first piece I did, I did it in a very rudimentary style where I just kind of printed out a picture of what I wanted to build. And I just took a, you know, a grid, a gridded piece of paper, and then just kind of tried to use the grid to sketch what I needed to do. Um, it came out all right. Uh, but I started thinking, you know, is there any way I can use science to my advantage uh, when I'm doing these pieces? And the first thing I did was I, I ended up building an algorithm, a uh, computer Python algorithm that does what you're, what you were talking about with your, your uh, Yoda. Um, it, it basically takes any image you want to build and yeah. you take a folder with all the images you want it built out of, and then it'll just do it. It'll go through each tile and pick the best map. Um, that was my first idea. And I actually built a piece that way. I built a pretty large Hank Aaron piece out of all uh, 1987 tops cards, one through 100, where I actually scanned in those hundred cards and then digitally chopped them up into 16 pieces each. So I had 1600 possibilities to work from. And then I had it go through, I wrote the script so that it would tell me, you know, card number one, section A goes here, 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 and here. And it gives me the coordinates. And I just, it was a completely a paint by numbers. So uh, it was, it came out kind of cool. I don't really have it up on my site because I don't really use this, this technique anymore. And I'm not really, I'm not going to sell it. It's up on my wall here. Uh, maybe I can show you if I just grab the laptop. Yeah. So, I, I love I love that you've put physics into it. Oh, man. That's that one. So it's pretty big, but you can see that it's all just like square pieces. They're all the same shape. Uh, but that was built using a computer algorithm that I wrote. And it's, you know, it's cool, but um, I didn't really uh, feel like there was a whole lot of artistic integrity to that. Um, it's just basically a paint by number. So, you know, it's just telling you what, to, what to put where, and you're not really having to do much on your own. I mean, other than writing the algorithm, right. It's, but yeah. so I, I kind of, um, I kind of abandoned that, um, after I did that piece, I decided that, you know, it wasn't enough artistic integrity behind it. And I wanted, I wanted, to, and it wasn't as engaging, you know, it was just kind of, a a menial task to sit here and cut the cards and then know exactly like, okay, now I need to find these coordinates and put these pieces here. It wasn't as fun. So um, I moved away from that. And what I ended up coming up with was, um, I just was tr trying to come up with ideas on how I could, you know, help build a template for this. But what I ended up doing is I wrote a script that 
takes an image and then it rebuilds it out of a discrete number of colors or RGB values. So what you do is, what I do is I take the picture I want to reproduce or the card, I go through and I sample, you know, just little different regions of color from it that I, that I think I'm going to need or that I, you know, that I think are prominent in the card. And then I find the RGB values using some code. Um, and then I rebuild the image out of just those colors. Yeah. And then once I have, if it looks pretty good built out of those only eight or 10 colors or whatever it is, um, I know that in theory, if I only just use those eight colors to build this thing, then it'll look pretty good. So then the next thing I do is I go and I find the, um, the boundaries between where it changes from one color to another. And then I have a script that basically what it ends up doing is just outlining the regions that are all the same color. So, you know, I, I get a, basically a template that has uh, all of the same color regions outlined. And now I know when I'm building this, I, okay, uh, well, and then I have to, you know, I, I stack that on top of the original image and I have that open on my laptop when I'm working, but I can just look at it and tell where, you know, looking at my template here, okay, this is his eyebrow, you know, this is his, his, um, his mouth, his nostrils, you know, everything, everything that's a solid color ends up just being outlined. And let, let me see, uh, I'm working on a, working on a Larry Doby right now, but this might give you an idea of what I mean here. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. So this is pretty Oh, big. wow, look at that. But you can see my template here. This is, you know, I ba basically just, all these little outline regions are supposedly the same color. So, you know, you can see that it got the name pretty well. It got the box around the name. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work great. And this one's a little little bit messier than some of the others, but um, but it really is enough to get me, you know, to get the features uh, close enough. And so, I mean, it's not perfect and I have to, you know, I still have to use some, uh, I still have to match colors pretty well. And, and there's places where it's just kind of a jumbled mess where the, where the code doesn't work great. And I just have to kind of figure those parts out on my own, but it, it does provide a really good foundation for building this kind of art. Um, so basically, you know, I take the template and I digitally chop it in nine pieces, resize them in a word document, print them out, tape them all together. And then I've got my template. It's amazing. So, what that's a great what I now. That's that's the that's the uh, technique that I've come up with <laughs> over yeah. the last couple of years that um, seems to work fairly well, and I've been going with that um, for a while now. And you know, there's a, I'm always trying to do little tweaks and refinements, but uh, it seems like it's pretty solid for the most part. It's worked well. So that's awesome. How long does it take you to do a, to do one piece, like from start to finish? Um, gosh, you know, it depends on the piece, but they they are very very time consuming. Um, the Kobe, you know, when I quoted that, uh, it was a commission. I, I was expecting that one to take about a hundred hours, yeah. and the Kobe ended up taking about one hundred and fifty. Uh, a lot of the baseball pieces that that aren't as complicated as that one that I do, and baseball is easier for me because I have more cards and I know the sets better. Um, I would say typically somewhere between seventy and a hundred hours is is pretty typical for most of these pieces. Yeah. Um. With you, like you've you've done some. Um, I've seen the Kobe piece that that you've done as well, which is really good. Did you use baseball cards in that, or did you use basketball cards? I used basketball cards for the Kobe, yeah. um, and that made it more difficult for me because, like I said, you know, I've got two hundred thousand baseball cards. I probably only had about five thousand basketball cards, and luckily the guy that commissioned it sent me about six thousand of his own. And then I have a buddy that I locally that I met on Twitter that happens to live close to here that I do trades with and he happened to have a couple thousand. So I was able to source some cards fairly easily, but I still had a very much more limited selection and a much more limited knowledge. So with baseball cards, like I know that, you know, 1991 Bowman is green on the back. I know that 1989 tops traded is red on the back and pink in the red and pink. And like, I know almost everything from the, the late eighties, early nineties, I almost know what every, uh, set color is on the back. Um, yeah. with basketball, I had no clue. So I had to do a lot of just sorting through the cards. And I think that added a lot of time to the, to the build for the Kobe is that just my lack of familiarity with basketball. It's still a really cool piece. I was going to ask you if there's any, um, work that you prefer doing more than others, but I think you pretty much answered that with the, with the baseball over other sports. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I, I collect baseball cards. 
Um, so it's cool to, you know, I don't really collect football or basketball. I've done, like I said, though, you know, I, I have done basketball, a basketball piece and some football ones too. But yeah, I prefer baseball. And part of the fun of it is I get to sort through and look at all these baseball cards while I'm building a piece. Yeah. You know, because a lot, a lot of times it's an excuse. It's like, oh, well, I need, you know, I need this orange color. I guess I have to buy a box of 87 Don Russ. And, you know, I get to rip through and pull out the Greg Maddox rookies and stuff. So. Yeah. Well, who's who's your favorite player then that that you've that you've managed to do? Um, so my favorites growing up were a lot of the guys that I've done. So like Nolan Ryan, obviously. Yeah. I mean, you know, I I, I love the first piece I did was a Nolan Ryan piece. Um, I don't have it here, um, but the very first piece I did was based on his rookie card. And I actually recently, uh, I'll grab this for you. This has uh, been a holy grail item for me for a while. The Nolan Ryan rookie. Yes. So I yeah. finally got one of those recently. Um, so yeah, I think Nolan was kind of my favorite. He's definitely my favorite pitcher, um, just because you know he was so tough and and was just uh, played for so long and had he threw so hard for so long and broke all these records. I just always thought he was a really amazing player. Um, I I love Kyle Ripken Jr., uh, Ricky Henderson. Um, yes. Ryan Sandberg. I was a big Braves fan, so you know Ron Gant, Dave Justice, uh, Chipper Jones. The list goes on. I mean, there were a lot of guys that I really liked uh, when I was younger. Uh, Greg Maddox, great pitcher. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but now you know I've kind of gotten into collecting vintage more, and the guys that I go after are like uh, you know Koufax, Yastrzemski, um, Willie Mays, Hank Aaron, uh, Roger Maris, Yogi Berra, Whitey Ford. Uh, that list goes on too. Warren Spawn, always love Warren Spawn. Um, yeah, uh, mostly you know, I, I'm I, what I collect now is uh, vintage Hall of Fame guys. Yeah. So, are, are there any modern plays that, that you'd like to do a mosaic of? Um, you know, I'm actually working on a trout right now, but it's uh, it's based on a Project 2020 card. Oh, and, cool. uh, so it, it was Ermsy Erms, his his Mike Trout card. Someone asked me if I could commission and then build that piece. Um, and of course, I didn't want to do it without talking to Ermsey first. So I actually reached out to him and said, hey, you know, I got a client who has this idea. Like, would this be OK with you if I built your 2020 Mike Trout card out of uh, out of baseball cards? And he said, yes. So I'm working on that right now. Um, to be totally honest, I don't follow baseball as much as I used to. Um, I like to I like to watch games and stuff, but I'm not really as into it as I was when I was a kid. And you know, nowadays it's kind of more about the history to me. You know, I like I like the old cards. I like uh, I like reading about you know the feats of the the players from the the early part of the century and stuff like that. Is that how you got involved with the Negro League project? Then was it the history that appealed to you? Well, actually, you know, uh, actually, Tad reached out to me. Um, the guy that's running it, he reached out to me. And you know, asked if I'd be interested, and you know, it was a no-brainer to to be a part of that um, because it's obviously a, a, a good cause. Um, you know, I think it's uh, the museum. I think it's important that you know we preserve that history. I mean, that's kind of a big piece of baseball history that not a lot of people really pay attention to. And um, you know, I think the museum is a great is a great thing. You know, to 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 kind of encapsulate that that baseball history that not a lot of people hear about. I mean, there were a lot of these players, you know, back in the early 1900s and stuff that were amazing baseball players and nobody's ever heard of them, right? They never had the same opportunities as all the other players, you know, just because of the color of their skin. And um, it's important to recognize that part yeah. of history. And so, I, I mean, for me, it was, it was, uh, it was clearly, you know, yes, I want to be a part of that. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's a really cool thing that he's doing. And I, I've seen how much work he's been putting in to organize everything, and it's very commendable. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. Are you working on anything in particular for, for the project? Uh, I'm not gonna, there's not going to be anything I can finish in that time period frame right now. So I haven't really had, you know, I, I have a Jackie Robinson piece that I wish I could finish during this week, but I just, it's not going to happen. So I kind of, uh, the stuff I do takes so long that I wasn't really able to get uh, to make to build something specific just for uh, just for this this uh, fundraiser. 
So what I'm doing is I'm, you know, I, I offer prints uh, of all my work. I have some originals for sale. Um, I even have, I even built a uh, custom art card set uh, that, so it's, it's like I built like an eight card set that uh, out of just um, small prints of my artwork that I finished over the last year. That's cool. um, they, look, they look like little baseball cards and they got a little information about the art on the back. I think I might have an example of one here actually. Let me see if I can grab it. Again, this this is where the the power of YouTube over the the audio will come in handy. So here is Ricky Henderson. I've got that card. But this is my version. Oh wow! So this is actually a small sticker print of my art piece. Um, so what I did was I printed out. Oh, don't lose that. <laughs> That's what the case is for. Um, yeah, so what I did was I, I printed out all the backs onto a big piece of cardstock, and then I, I had my guys that do stickers, they do a real good job. I had them print out a bunch of stickers for me, and then I just basically stuck the stickers onto the cardstock and cut them to size. So this is the size of a baseball card. Um, I limited them to 50 total. So that's one of my products I've got. So basically, like, right now for the, for the benefit, you know, I'm just donating 20% uh, of any sales um, to to the museum. So, you know, awesome. if something costs, if something on my website costs $40, you know, $8 goes to the museum if I sell. Excellent. Well, congratulations. That's a great, great gesture and a lovely piece of, of uh, work. I looked forward to seeing that Jackie Robinson piece where it's finally, finally finished. Yeah, like I'm actually using really you. Uh, those, so you showed me those studio cards. So it's a, it's going to be my first black and white piece, and uh, I'm using all those um, a lot of studio for the yeah. face. I'm using a lot of those black and white faces. Awesome. Um, cool. That one has been on the back burner for a little while, and I'd like to get it back on the table here, but I have some uh, deadlines I have to meet with a couple commissions here. So I'm kind yeah. of in a crunch right now. I've been doing some traveling, some camping and stuff, and it's catching up to me. I've been maybe doing a little too much play and not enough work this last month. So I <laughs> gotta, gotta get to the grind. Oh uh, yeah. Back, back to the, back to the third, as they say, um, have there been any like real life situations that's inspired, inspired you to create any pieces? Um, I mean, I was really inspired when I saw the work of Tim Carroll. Um, and I guess <clears throat> when I, when I went to the, to the national, uh, collector's convention a couple years ago that was pretty inspiring um, because I did get to see Tim's work in person for the first time uh, there and also just seeing all the cool memorabilia that you know I mean just like anything you can imagine is at that thing I mean um, I don't know if you've, you've probably heard of it the National Collector's Convention it's the big the big one in the U.S. the big collector's convention <clears throat> where I mean you can find anything in everything you can imagine. I mean, they, they had, there was a booth that had a Honus Wagner, T206 Honus Wagner. Um, there's mantle rookies, and, but there's also a lot of art and, and, and Tim Carroll was kind of my, my uh, inspiration. So when I, when I got to see his work in person, that was inspiring to me. Yeah. Um, and I saw, I went down to the Baseball Hall of Fame recently in Cooperstown and uh, all the art there was just you know, amazing. Um, and yeah. Tim has a piece in there as well. That's cool. Yeah, you had any celebrity interest in any of your pieces? What's that? You had any celebrity interest? Uh, any players taking notice of your work and, and inquiry? Um, not yet. No, I haven't. Um, well, there was there was one baseball former baseball player named Adam Weisenberg, I think, that that contacted me, and uh, he was looking to try to build one of on his own. So I actually kind of helped him out and I built a template for him. That's cool. um, I've helped out a few people in the past, you know, if, if, if they really want to try this for themselves, I'm happy to give people a little bit of guidance and I'll even, you know, I, I uh, even traded a guy recently for, you know, 20 bucks in, a, in an Andre Dawson card. Uh, I built him a, a template for the piece that he was trying to build. And, uh, <clears throat> and and I gave him like a, you know a detailed set of instructions on how to try to build it. So I, I like to help people out um, if I can. But no, I haven't actually built anything for any celebrities yet. But I'm hoping that I'll get that opportunity at some point. 
Yeah, hopefully. You know, it all takes a word of mouth to, to spread like. Yeah, you know, I have to, I'm still, I think, in the phases of kind of trying to get my name out there a little bit, you know. Like I said, I've only been doing it for a couple of years, so um, just got to keep chugging away. Yeah. Um, where, where do you work? Do you work at home or have you got a studio? I, I have an apartment and my room is pretty large, um, but this is where I work. It's my bedroom and my art studio. So about half of it is my dresser and my clothes and my bed. And then the other half is baseball cards and a couple of desks and, and supplies. Is there something that you can't live without in your studio when you're working? Well, I, I'm about to run out of glue stick. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's that I definitely can't live without. Um, I mean, no, I don't really uh, listen to music or anything. Um, I like it to be kind of quiet when I work. Yeah. Um, that's why I I'll, oftentimes I'll work at night um, just because there's not a lot of noise for, for, you know, coming from outside, you know, roommates asleep. Uh, um, but yeah, I mean, otherwise, you know, just my materials and my, and my cards, the cards I need. That's awesome. Um, where can we find your work? Um, so I'm mostly active on Twitter. Um, so my handle is uh, card underscore mosaics. Uh, but I do have the same, the same handle on Instagram. I think that's where you found me. Yeah. Um, I have a Facebook page. If you were to search my name, you'd probably find that. And I do have a website also. Um, so my website is www.sportscardmosaics.com. Excellent. And I recently set up a, a store there where you can actually, if you have PayPal, you can, you can buy prints uh, and stuff directly from the site. And do they ship to the UK? Uh, so we'd probably have to look at that. I, I, right now <laughs> I have it set up for US only just because I'm not charging for shipping. Okay. Uh, so, but what I could, you know, so I, I need to probably put a note on there saying, if you'd like, you'd like it to ship out of the country, send me an email. We'll discuss it. I'll figure out what that'll cost. And we'll yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. Brilliant. Because a lot of my listeners are based in the UK. I think um, I'm, I'm, I'm like just looking at, I can't take my eyes off that Nolan Ryan piece in the background. I think that you probably find a bit of interest, hopefully, from, from over yeah, the seat. Um, yeah, I'm, I know I could ship to the UK. I just, it's a matter of... I, I, it would be more expensive, I think, and and I just kind of set it up to where it's, the shipping was free. So I, you know, I'm saying only I'm only allowing U.S. shipping if you try to buy directly from my site. Um, yeah. I don't know. I guess that's something I should figure out. You know, I, I kind of sort of assume that most of the people that would be interested in this kind of stuff would be from the U.S., but you know, apparently I'm not I'm not totally on point there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, that brings me to the end of, of my questions. Uh, ben, there's something I like to do on, on my podcast when I have a guest on is that I leave the last word open to a guest. So is there anything you'd like to mention or talk about or any final words, part and advice? Um, no, you know, I think we actually covered everything pretty well. Uh, we went through my history and process and mm -hmm. some of the projects I'm working on. So yeah, I think, I think, I think I'm good if you're good. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Uh, ben, I'll uh, leave you in peace to, to, Cut up some pieces and do your piece. Uh, I think it's right, far you so too much. many times. <laughs> but um, thank you so much for giving me some of your time. I know I know you're a busy fellow, so I really appreciate you. Oh no problem talking to me. But um, uh, thank you very much and take it easy. I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Bye bye. bye.